Hello and welcome to Drugs Plus. Whether you're here for exam revision or just general interest, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so that I'm able to continue creating this content. In this video, I'm going to introduce my new series of videos all about thrombosis. Thrombosis is the development of a thrombus, or a blood clot. The clotting property of blood is absolutely essential to life, as when we damage our blood vessels, for example if we cut our finger, the blood forms a clot, which acts as a plug, preventing blood from hemorrhaging out of our body. However, the events that trigger thrombosis, the exposure of blood to unfamiliar substances from the vessel wall, can also occur when an unstable atherosclerotic plaque ruptures. This clot formation, in the absence of actual vessel damage in which to plug, can cause the formation of a thrombus, which can block vital blood vessels. If this happens in coronary arteries, it is called myocardial infarction or heart attack. If it happens in the lung, it is a pulmonary embolism. And if it's in the brain, it's a stroke. So this is clearly an incredibly dangerous event, which currently accounts for around a quarter of deaths worldwide every year. Thrombi can form in either the arterial or venous systems. Arterial thrombi are mostly made up of platelets, whereas venous thrombi are mostly made up of red blood cells and clotting factors. And for those reasons, arterial thrombi are treated using antiplatelet therapies, and venous thrombi are treated using anticoagulants. I'm now going to explain the process of platelet aggregation. This is a platelet. When a blood vessel is damaged, collagen and von Willebrand factor from the extracellular matrix are exposed to the blood. Platelet adhesion molecules, GPV1, GP1B and integrins bind to these proteins and begin the process of platelet activation. This causes the platelet to release serotonin and a thromboxane A2, both of which mediate vasoconstriction. This pushes activated platelets closer together to promote aggregation. Platelets are also activated by thrombin, which you'll see more about in the coagulation cascade next. This thrombin acts on the protease activated receptors, or PARs, causing the release of intracellular calcium stores which activates psychooxygenase 1, which subsequently generates further thromboxane A2. Platelet activation also induces the release of ADP from dense granules, which goes on to activate nearby platelets via P2Y receptors, stimulating the expression of GP2B3A receptors, or fibrinogen receptors. This allows fibrinogen molecules to connect to adjacent platelets, causing aggregation. As platelets are activated by a number of different pathways, no drug will be able to mediate total prevention of aggregation, although many are relatively effective. I'll discuss those in my video on antiplatelet therapies, the link for which I will provide below. I will now introduce the coagulation cascade. As in platelet aggregation, this pathway is triggered by the exposure of blood to unfamiliar substances. The exposure to collagen triggers the activation of factor 7, which goes on to activate factor 9, which along with its cofactor, factor 8, forms the intrinsic tenase complex. Blood is also exposed to tissue factor, which activates factor 7, which, along with tissue factor, forms the extrinsic tenase complex. Both tenases are activated by calcium and subsequently activate factor 10, which, along with its cofactor, factor 5, forms the prothrombinase complex. This converts prothrombin to thrombin, which converts fibrinogen to fibrin, and activates factor 13. Fibrin monomers bind together to form fibrin polymers, which are converted by factor 13 to a fibrin mesh. Anticoagulants are drugs which disrupt this pathway and therefore prevent the formation of a thrombus. I'll discuss those more in my video on anticoagulants, the link for which I will also provide below. 
The most challenging aspect of antithrombotic drugs is achieving the perfect balance between thrombosis and hemorrhage. For example, heparin is a really potent antithrombotic drug, however it has been known to cause hemorrhages, as its effect on preventing thrombosis pushed the scales the other way. So the most important thing to consider when developing a new antithrombotic drug is getting this balance absolutely correct. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to support this channel so I'm able to keep creating this content. I'll be back with more pharmacology videos soon.